Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Toyota Prius. As for the suspension of cars, that before that after restyling, there are no complaints. Up front, up to a run of 200,000, replacements will certainly require only the stabilizer struts. There are also chances to change the ball joint, strut supports or silent blocks of the front levers with runs less than 200,000, but not 100%. The rear is even simpler and more resourceful. With runs for 250,000, often the rear beam silent blocks, shock absorbers and their bushings can be familiar and in a tolerable condition. The idle is spoiled a little by the very probable breakdowns of wheel bearings, which do not like Reliance wheels and bad roads. Steering with the simplest EUR on the steering column creates almost no problems. With very high mileage, the torque sensor fail and the steering wheel can lead slightly to the right and left. The position sensor wears out and a clear zero disappears. The terminal block can burn, but mainly due to errors of repairmen. Well, the rail itself is prone to tapping and the resource of the tips is not a record one, after 50-60,000 km they should be checked regularly. What is the hybrid standard to drive? Very many simply do not understand. Calling it a variator, CVT or simply power transmission. And here an explanation is needed. The problem with any electrical transmission of low power is its efficiency. The lower the power, the lower the efficiency. For the power of the motor of a passenger car, the efficiency is very low, less than 70% at best, which makes the use of such a transmission completely ineffective and unsuitable in practice. The ingenious idea of the Japanese designers is based on the use of double differential mechanism, which first divides the power flow into two branches using a differential, and the second differential again reduces the power flow into one. By changing the gear ratio in one of the branches in the gap, you can change the overall gear ratio of the drive. In the case of mechanical conversions, this doesn't make much sense, because the less power flow through this branch of the differential divider, the greater the reduction factor must be in order to influence the overall gear ratio. But for an electric transmission, the reduction ratio tends to infinity and can even be negative, which means that it is well suited to work in such a divider. The power flow of the internal combustion engine is divided into two unequal parts by the first differential. Most of the torque goes to the mechanical transmission and to the combining differential. And a small part of the moment goes to the electric transmission with its enormous transformation capabilities. The electronics of the car easily sets the desired gear ratio in the generator electric motor circuit and due to operation of the differential mechanism, the total gear ratio changes within limits that are quite sufficient for the operation of a passenger car. At the same time, the power transmitted through the electrical part remains relatively small and the low efficiency of the electrical part of the transmission has little effect on the efficiency of the power plant as a whole, because most of the power is transmitted through the mechanical transmission with an efficiency close to 100%. Such a system doesn't have a torque converter, it doesn't need a clutch or complicated hydraulics. Maximum of a couple of band brackets for the system to work without one of the motors and a simple disconnecting clutch. The gear ratio of the electrical part of the transmission changes steplessly, and the moment of the output shaft of the transmission also changes smoothly. This is why it's called a variator, but technically it is not correct. There are no mechanisms for smoothly changing the moment, it's just a power transmission. Technically, the transmission is implemented as a set of planetary gearboxes, which makes it very compact and easy to install on cars. The system was so successful that many competitors, including GM and Honda, bought it from Toyota. In the second generation Prius, the total power of electric machines is 50 kW, the power of the internal combustion engine is 58 kW, that is 77 horsepower. The power transmission itself is not very important. The meaning of this machine is not only in the clever transmission, but also in the fact that the power transmission is reversible, storing energy during braking and giving off during acceleration. This allows you to get by with less power in the internal combustion engine, use it only in the most advantageous modes of operation or even go some distance on electric traction. The European Prius 2 has such an opportunity. The hybrid has only one gearbox, the second generation HSD itself. The unit is reliable to put not without weak points. The main problem of the mechanical part is vibrations, they increase with mileage and the speed of their manifestation decreases. Sometimes the reason is the wear of the CV joint, but more often the problem is inside the unit itself. The bushings of the three-way clutch are primarily subject to wear. The presence of the yellow traces of bronze in the filter box almost always indicates its wear. The tapered bearing of the gear block is the second in line for a failure. There is also a chance of a differential failure. Yes, you can't tow a Prius at all. 
The box will break quickly and completely. It is theoretically possible to repair it, but in practice almost no one does this, since the price for used automatic transmission gearboxes are in range of 200-300 euros. On average, the, go the box goes to serious problems with 250,000. The second important part of the transmission is the inverter, which is responsible for the gear ratio in the transmission. There is also only one motor in the car. This is the 1NZ FXC, a special version of the popular 1NZ that operates on the Atkinson cycle and has a number of differences from conventional motors. For example, an electric pump drive, not the most reliable part, and a heat accumulator in American versions, used for quick warm-up during a cold start. These motors belong to the same generation as the infamous 1ZZ and their problems are similar. First of all, get ready for the fact that after a run of 120-150 thousand, the oil appetite will grow even with Toyota oil. And secondly, the resource of the timing chain is very small. After hundreds of thousands of runs, you need to be ready to replace it. True, it can strain more than 200,000 and the replacement price is not too big, but for Toyota, this is far from the best engine. Vibrations and floating revolutions as well as fogging of the covers also do not pain the motor. Valve rattles require clearance adjustments, the previous version has no lifters and the valve seats are very delicate, but it is inexpensive to repair and the price for used unit starts at 300,000 rubles. Special feature of the FXC version is the severe contamination of the intake manifold, as well as high requirements for spark plugs and lambda probes. They have to be changed relatively often and it's better to put the original ones. There are also enough small typical problems, so the oil pressure sensor is unsuccessful, prone to leaks and the liners do not lack the slightest drop in oil level of pressure. The aluminum block of cylinders easily loses the thread of the cylinder head bolts, but in this case, the technology of installing the foot has been used for a long time. And this information about the problems of Toyota Prius XV20 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.